I'm Greg Albers, the director of the Stanford Stroke Center and the principal investigator of the Diffuse 3 study. We're extremely excited to present Diffuse 3 at the International Stroke Conference. This was a large, randomized trial funded by the National Institutes of Health. We looked at patients who arrived beyond the current guidelines for thrombectomy treatment. These are specifically patients in the 6 to 16 hour window. And the idea of the study was to randomize these late window patients to thrombectomy versus standard medical therapy based on American Heart Association guidelines. The twist was that we identified patients using a software that we developed at Stanford University called RAPID. This software allows us to use CT perfusion or MR diffusion and perfusion imaging to identify salvageable brain tissue. Specifically, the software identifies tissue that's likely to be irreversibly injured, as well as tissue that is abnormal in terms of cerebral blood flow, but very likely to still be salvageable. These patients uh, were identified and randomized, and we followed them for three months to look at the clinical outcomes. What we found was rather astonishing. The good outcome rate in the thrombectomy arm was spectacular. Nearly half of the patients had a fully independent outcome and that's compared to only one out of six patients in the medical arm. In addition, when you look at severe disability, patients who depended on others for all activities of daily living and were essentially nursing care bound, that was reduced by 50%. So a really impressive outcome, particularly considering these patients were treated beyond a window that most people thought would be feasible. So what have we learned from the trial? One is we've learned that it is very likely that we can expand the treatment window out to much longer than the current six hours. And we anxiously anticipate new guidelines from the American Heart Association that will address this longer treatment window. We also learn that strokes evolve differently than we may have been taught in the past. Although time is brain is still a very important mantra, we now need to modify the mantra to say that there is a substantial fraction of very fortunate patients whose strokes don't evolve as fast as we thought. Many of these patients with large middle cerebral artery or internal carotid artery occlusions have very little irreversible injury for many hours after symptom onset. However, their collaterals don't last forever. What we learned from the medical arm of this trial is if these patients are not reperfused, they go on to have large and debilitating strokes. So, as practice moves forward into 2018, the implication is for much more perfusion-based imaging at primary stroke centers, because patients who come in in the late time window now need to be identified to see if they're a candidate for endovascular therapy.